His Spirit lives in you and me the moment we believed Him as our Lord and Savior. And that, and that as we go forth this morning, I, as I was here, I don't want to be here if God's not in it. I don't want to be part of something if God's, if he's not in it, guess what? We just need to have a nice prayer and go home. Because if God's not going to be in it, what's the point of being here? If our lives aren't going to be changed and rearranged, then why be here? I can be home doing something else and knowing I'm getting it done. But the, the strange part about when we get together, it's icing on the cake. It's when we get together, iron sharpens iron. But it's also when we get together that when our brothers and sisters or, or those around us, we're able to encourage and sharpen and, 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 and build each other up in Jesus. Build each other up in Jesus and know that whatever's coming. How many times have you ever talked to somebody you weren't doing very, or you just weren't very up to snuff, but when you left there, boy, you were charged up and ready to go talking to your brother or your sister. And you might, they might not, I've said this a lot, I, you did not even know what they were saying. But it sure, when I said, they did not know maybe what you were going through, but it sure encouraged you when you walked away. When we hang out, just when we shake hands and do things, just, just saying hi or how are you, that encourages people. I know people that, that and in the past, because I didn't shake their hand on Sunday, they didn't come back to church because they didn't think I liked them. I just didn't make it to them. But we're not of those kind of people. We're the kind of people who love one another. And by this, the, the world will know that Jesus has made a change in our lives. Amen? So we're going to go forward this morning, and we, we call, we, 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 the name of Jesus, that every knee will bow at the name of Jesus. There's something about that name. There's victory in that name, joy and peace and goodness and kindness and love. All that is wrapped up in Jesus. And guess what? We can live in that world because we can live in his world because he lives in ours. He lives right here in you and me. You can live in his world. Is there any sickness in his world? No. Doubt and disbelief. No. He knows who he is. He knows where he's going. He knows what he came to do. And even I said this last week, I might have said it Wednesday, I don't remember. But he said, if there's any other way to do this, let it be so when he went to go to the cross. But he said, nevertheless, nevertheless, not mine but yours, I'll do. But if there's any other way, that flesh, the human side of him saying, I'm not going to like this. I'm not going to like this. But he said, nevertheless, this is what I'll do. This is what I'm going to do willingly because I love and I know you love each and every person on the face of the planet. Do you know that? He loves Muslims. He knows the ISIS people. All that. He loves every bit of them. And he wishes that none perish but all come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. All come to the saving knowledge. And when we use the name Jesus, when I say, I don't want to use the name Jesus just as a formula or just as a prayer, but we believe in Jesus as everything. We believe that he did it all. For you and for me. And we're not just going to camp there, but we're going to get up and keep going. Amen. We're going to keep going. And I'm going to start with something that looks kind of goofy. I'm going to, have you ever heard of the serpent and the snake? They're both the same. Have you ever heard of the bronze serpent? What did they do? They put it on a pole. But what did they have to do? They had to look at it. And is that the strangest thing? The thing that's biting them, they got to look at. The thing, now do you think just looking at the snake... This, the, the, what I want to get to, the, the looking at, does that not seem strange? When we get here, when we pray, if you remember, we pray in Jesus' name. Does that not seem strange sometimes when all the things are going on in life, but yet we'll, we'll pray in Jesus' name? For you and me, it says the, the gospel is to the world. The gospel doesn't make sense. But to you and me who are saved, it's the power of God unto salvation. And that power of God rested you and me. When we begin to pray in Jesus' name, the word, how many here have heard the word amen? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we pray, do you know what amen means? Throw it out at me. So be it. So be it. Let it be so. Do you know when you go to Revelations in 3, Jesus is the amen. It gives an illustration that it says that he is the amen. And if you go back and read 2 Corinthians where it says all the promises of God are yes and amen. Amen in what? Amen in Jesus. In, in Jesus is the one that provided it all. Amen. He is solid and true. Valid. When you say amen, you're declaring that all that he is is solid and true. Lord, bless this food to my body. Amen, because you're declaring that what Jesus did is solid and true, that he validated everything. Isn't that pretty cool? 
Amen. Don't just say it. When, we're, when you say amen, say it knowing that in Jesus it's solid and true. In Jesus, it's, he's validated it all. I can declare what his word says. Amen. I can declare it didn't say just some of his promises. It says all of his promises. Not just some, not just a little. It says all of his promises are yes. And amen. In him, he validated it all. So where does your validation go to live, live a life with goodness and mercy chasing you? Because of what Jesus did. You can declare goodness and mercy are chasing me and, and, say, and, and say amen and declare it because of what Jesus did for you. And then here's the next thing. You can expect it. But it might seem goofy like looking, a, like looking at a snake on a pole. Does that make any sense? If we look at it, if we think about it up here, Jim, how many times have you preached that? Did that make any sense when you really think they had to look at the pole? But let me ask you this. If you look at the word, if you look at the word look, you back that up to act. This is in Numbers 21. So wants to go and, and write that down and go and read it. Let me just read it to you. It says, when they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around to the land of Edom, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on their way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. What they're saying, what were they giving them every day? God was giving them man, he said, we hate this stuff. We hate it. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they, and, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take, take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery... Now watch, there's a deal here. He said... He, did, he said, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. He didn't say go pick up a snake and put it on a pole. He said, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he did what? He lived. Now... I used the word making. It didn't tell Jesus just to go take, a, to go take that, a snake and put it on a pole. He said, go make a bronze. You know the word fiery? When they got bit, it felt like fire. The sting of the venom was so fiery that it just, that was what consumed their, you ever been bit, anybody ever been bit by a snake? Anybody ever killed a snake? Don't raise your hand. We, have, we used to have lots of copperheads at our house. And when your girls are little, Try to be careful of all that. I remember one time sticking my head in my bench for something underneath of it in a big uh, snake shed. I never saw the snake, but boy, it sure made me think different when I walked out in my garage in my flip-flops. <laughs> I sure paid a lot more attention. And then one time, Rick, Rick, I, Rick we had a 55-gallon barrel drum, and, and I looked down, and there was a, I mean, a snake was right there, and he had his head reared up, and he was coming for me. And, and this that fast, I was inside that barrel. The top was off of it. You ever just flat-footed? And I called her, help! Sound like a girl. <laughs> and can he come in there and a snake, and it had, a, it had caught a mouse. So it was in the middle of eating that mouse, but I thought its mouth was coming back, coming back for me. So anyhow. My manhood was restored, and the snake was, I don't know what happened to him. I don't recall, but I'm sure we were, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyhow, that's not important. But the point I want you to see, what, was Jesus not made sin for you and me? He said he was made sin, and then, it, where was, then Jesus hung on a cross. And the point I want to get to, the bronze, the bronze here in the Old Testament, it represents judgment. Judge, when they looked upon it, God was saying, I'm looking to look past all that. And, you, and when you say look, you say, you'll consider everything that I've done. You consider it. It didn't mean just take your eyes and just, okay, I'm looking at the clock. You're going to do so. There was something, there was a change in them because the very, it didn't make any sense. And the very thing that was biting them and killing them, they had to raise up. They had to raise up and look at that very snake. And when the moment they considered, considered all that, began, it says those were even bitten lived. 
lit. And I, and I want to correlate it with Jesus. When you look, to, it's not just looking at a, wearing a cross on your neck and, and everybody, if they see this, they're going to know that. Don't this, because how many people looked at a cross on somebody's shirt? Or on the back of a car? Or some of you might even have a tattoo on them. I've seen guys got them all across their back, their arms, that's, but you have a tattoo. Is that going to save them? No, it's not going to say if you just look at There has to be where you can, there's, there's a process that comes in that you consider that Jesus is everything. When we pray, we, we, we're, we're looking to Jesus going, we believe that he is everything. We're not just trying to throw a bunch of words in, but it says pray for the sick and they will be healed. We pray for them and we believe in Jesus' name, the amen, that he is solid and valid and true, and we're resting on that promise. We are resting on that promise that he's solid and true and that he's always for me and, and never against me. I say these things a lot because if I could get, if we can keep growing and being built up that he's always for us and good things are coming down, no matter what's coming down the pike, it can't, it can't deter us from the love and the greatness that he has placed in us to come out. Because, because we're, let's go to John chapter, there's lots we can say about Numbers 21, but I don't want to. Let's go to John chapter 3. If I asked you to read John chapter 3, 16, anybody quote it to me? Yeah, yeah. Now, could you read, could you read John, can anybody quote John 14 to me, 3, 14? How about 17? What's 17? He did to save and to seek those who were lost. So let's go at 13. Now, anybody know who he's talking to here? He's talking to one of the, Nicodemus. He's talking to one of the religious leaders of that time, and this is what he's talking about. And then they're having a discussion. He gets to 13, and he says, No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. Verse 14 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Now watch this. That whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I'm here want to perish. I've, ever, I've never met anybody that wants to perish. But it says here, whoever believes in him, and we looked at the difference in, in, the, in the Old Testament with the serpent, they had to look. They had to look to the serpent. At the, at the, now it says here, we have to believe. So they had to put their faith in looking that they would be restored. Now it says we need to put our faith, well, I'm translating Dan's, put our faith in believing that Jesus, when we look to Jesus, that he, that he will give us eternal life. Give us eternal life. That whoever, who is a whoever, believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Then it goes on, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. Did you hear that this morning? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be wrapped up in chains, put in bondage, made miserable. And it says they shall be saved, and saved is safe and secure. How many like being safe and secure? How many like being safe and secure? Then it says, in verse 18 it says, he who believes in him is not condemned. Woo. Look to your neighbor and say, you're not condemned. He who believes in him is not condemned. Is that goodness and mercy chasing you down? How many times is Christian now? I'm gonna take a little I'm gonna take a little side. Here. How many times have, have, have you felt condemned? Hmm? How many times have you felt beat up? Felt worthless? Felt no good. Don't think you measure up, add up. Well, here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've said this before, but make the playing level. We're all, we, we are all in Christ. We're all in him. He's in us. Guess what? The level we operate from is what Christ has put in our life. And he's our level. Jesus is the level. It's not, you know, I meet people thinking, if I memorize 100 verses, I do this, I do this, I do that, and then man, God will respond. Are you hearing me? When I get to that level, God will do something. 
When I go do all that God will do. And I'm not saying there's a process in seeking and doing. But if you just put all your efforts in just the seeking and doing, thinking God's going to do something, you're missing, the whole, you're missing the whole point of enjoying the journey. Do those things because you want to and grow on those things. But when you but start to see, operate from the level that I'm in Jesus and he's in me. That's all you need. And then from there, things will grow and open and doors. You'll see that when you walk, I've, I've said this enough, I can say it. When you walk through that door of salvation, that door opens up to, I'm going to use, a, a, it opens up into all kinds of rooms of life that you can find out. There's all kinds of things that are available to you and to me. And I would say it like to somebody, you'd go into their house. This might be the, this might be the fun room. or the, well, I, I don't like to use the fun room because that means there's got to be a bad room. But that means that when you go in, there's all kinds of, you know, you go into one of Rick, I use Rick's, Rick's house. You go into one of his rooms, it's got John Wayne everywhere. Okay? Uh, you, go to, you, might, you go to Brother Jim's, he's got some race car and some old cars that he fixes up in another room. Um, you go into somebody's office or, or, or you, and you come to our, there's a verse that I've been all the time praying. It says, be still and know that I am God. And I kept going, man, I love that verse. Every time I'd read it, I really loved it. And then one day it dawned on me. I go, how come I like this verse so much? And dawned on me. My wife's got it in about, in about uh, uh, six inch or eight inch letters across our deal in our house. It's, it gets right there. And I've, it's something that's there. And I got so accustomed to it. But yet I knew it was, there was something there. And I thought, how do I know this verse? One day I was sitting there eating something. I looked up and I went, huh. Oh. <laughs> there it is right in front. But it was right there in front of me. But there's so much more to the salvation that you've been given in Christ. There's so much more to life that's been given to you. There's so many rooms. And as you journey through, be excited about the next door that you're getting to go to, the next journey, the next thing you're getting to see. It's not all about, it's not just about me just trying to not cuss and swear. And, and if I was a guy, you know, take a double look at a girl. I'm not saying that arrogantly, but it's not all, there's more to life than those things. And if you're always beating yourself up over that, you're never going to get anywhere. Because you're always beating your own self up here. But it says he didn't come to condemn. And we've got to get past. We, and here's the thing I've learned. The church is the biggest one of beating our own up. We beat our own kind up all the time. And I don't mean that in a condemning way. But he came to give us life and life abundantly. Why do we always got to beat each other up? Don't all shout me down on that one. I say goodness and mercy is coming, but be encouraged to love one another. Be encouraged to, to fellowship with one another. Be another. You know, I've had some people a while back come to me, and they were shaking somebody's hand, and they, I said, how come you don't, how, I ain't seen you in a while? Well, someone came up to me and said such and such and such and really hurt my feelings. So they said, we're not coming, you know, we're not coming. And that just broke my heart. And then here's the, they wouldn't tell me who it was. There was a whole lot more to the, I'm not going to make it more than that. But that's not the kind of people who we are. That's not what God intended us to do. He intended us to want to love and encourage one another. And I encourage you today. If, 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 there's none of us in here that walked in here perfect, but we're perfect in Christ. The perfectness that we walk in is what he provided for us. Amen. So if anybody here is thinking you're going to be perfect on your own, you're missing the whole boat. You're on a Titanic saying it ain't going to sink. I got news for you. It sank. I don't want to invite you, but I don't want to be on a sinking ship. I want to be on one that's got all the horsepower that there is, and we're going to go forward in life. The journey is great. doesn't mean everything that happens in life is, is great, but when you're in Christ, you can, wrap your, you can wrap everything around it in Christ and know that he'll give you strength that transcends all understanding. When Lynn, when I visited with Lynn, she felt like she'd been bit by a snake and beat up beat up in herself. And, and, she, and, we, and we talk, we visit, there's, and, and she knows what the word says. She's no idiot. But at that point, she was, she was being beat up or felt beat up. This, but she, we didn't camp there. We didn't stay in the wilderness and camp out there. We didn't go, oh, I hate this bread. Because the word here is, it's the bread of life. Will it not clean you up? Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and life. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. Whoever eats in me will be in whips and chains and a ring in his nose, and I'm going to drag him around. He says, no, I'm going to love them. I'm going to look past all of their faults and fears, and I'm going to provide a, I'm going to provide a spotless lamb that's going, to, that's going to take all the sins of the world, and, that, and these people that I love, are going to have, they're going to have a way that it's above all other ways. 
but they've got to look to me. And that, my friends, is the strangest part of what we call being a Christian is we look past ourselves and we look to Jesus. We look past all what we know and we look to Jesus. We look past at all what the world says and we look to Jesus. We look past all the ups and downs of, of what's going on and we look to Jesus. And we declare that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the door that leads to life and life abundantly. Amen. And if you don't understand all that, that's fine. Just think, just start there. Once you start through the door, it's an awesome journey. It's an awesome journey. It's an awesome life. There's lots of things going on. There's people around here dying of dying on heroin, dying of uh, on uh, what's the other um, uh, meth. They're getting hooked on all this stuff, and, and you know what it is? It's not the lost people getting hooked on it. It's 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 people that have, have given their lives to Christ, and they've been caught in this bondage because they're trying to walk out all the. We're, we got to get past putting band aids on people and start getting and take all the the stuff off of them. Tell them God loves them from the inside out. We're not just going to leave here putting a band aid on you, make you feel, give you a little kiss, make you feel a little better. Amen to that. But through the process of all this. Through the process of all this, here's what I leave. The strange thing is everything going on in the world and things that are happening, things that are happening, is you start to build that relationship, start to build that confidence that, that God is bigger than all these things. When that starts to reside and set in you, then his word starts to, it starts to what I call manifest, and it starts to show forth, but it comes from here out. If you're looking for a sign in the sky, a bird in the air, I'm not against, don't look for the signs. Be at peace in your heart that he is more than able. Be at peace in your heart that he's going to do great things and mighty things because that's what is promised in his word. That's what he's declared about me. He declares that he loves me. He declares that he's looking out for me. He declares that he's chasing me down. It says that he prepares a table in the midst of my enemies. I can feed off of his table in the midst of all that stuff going around because he's my strength and he's my source. And I can look to him. The, the Bible's got some strange things that happen in it, some cool stories. But I'm here to tell you, we're part of that story. It's continued on. It says we'll do great and mighty things in Jesus, in and through what Jesus has done in our lives. Amen. I want to live in his world. Amen. I want to live out the world that he came to give us. And you know, I read that verse. Let me see if I can unwrap this. We'll ask the Holy Spirit if we can unwrap this. Put John 3, 13 up there. See if we can unwrap this. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. Now, who's that? Jesus. That is the son of man. Well, there's the answer right there. Who is in heaven? But I'm going to throw this at Jesus was in heaven and he came down to put heaven in you. Amen. He came down here to put heaven in you. Does that make any sense? To some it does. Some of them might not, but my, what I want you to see is Jesus, it says, he, it says he became poor. You know, we think that because he's born a stable. But he, he's the one that walked on the streets of the gold and jasmine, all that stuff, the pearl, all, you name, everything he got, is the perfectness of everything. He said, I'm going to give it up, and I'm going to come down in the flesh of man. I'm going to come down, I'm going to be, everything he's tempted, everything he's going through, all the struggles, ups and downs, ins and outs, and I'm going to make a way for man to get out of all that and have a life, an abundant life. And I'm going to come down, I'm going to come from heaven, and I'm going to come down, and I'm going to put heaven in them. Amen. When they believe in me, I'm going to deposit heaven in them. Amen. And they can withdraw all that heaven has is available to them. They can with, withdraw that anytime they need to, anytime that's going on. But they've got to look to me. They've got to believe in me. Amen. They've got to believe in me. And as they believe in me and apply their faith in it, I'll see that faith and their trust to believe in me, and things will change and rearrange in their life. Amen? Amen? Amen. I said, like, not just to have faith, have faith in what Christ has done for you. Have faith that he did it all. Have faith that he is the way. Have faith. So as I unwrapped it, you can walk around. He came and he placed heaven in me. Amen. Woo! That'll change the day. He didn't put sickness and disease in me. He put heaven in me. He put in doubt and despair and, 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 and all those things in me. He put heaven in me. He put the light of the world, of Jesus in me. Is that not strange? If you start saying that kind of stuff, woo, 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 woo. we're strange anyway. 
We are. But be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged and be an encouragement wherever you go. The world's in a lot of pain. The world's in a lot of hurt. And they're not looking for a Band-Aid. They're looking for an answer that will change everything in their life from here. From here. And Rick said it, and so are the church. We need to change how, I'm not saying we need to change how, we need to change and to see that, it's, that Jesus is the everything. And that where he's placed us in him, we begin to walk that out as he walked it out. Because it says he came like you and me, so did he have to not walk it out? And I love how he walks things out. You read in the Bible, he didn't beat them up, he instructed them. He went and sat in the synagogues and listened to him talk. And I'd like to think he, he knew it all. But yet he sat there and listened to him. He might never thought he might have dropped a little word in here or a little deal. To, because he even tells them, you guys think you know it all, but you don't. But here I am and you can't see it. Have we ever never been the same way? Salvation came to you and me. Healing has come to you and me. Prosperity has come to you and me. Victory has come to you and me. Life abundantly has come to you and me. And sometimes we got to get past all of the religious nonsense and just say, I believe it, therefore I receive it. And, there, and I'm not going to let this mountain hold me back. I'm going to quit climb it. And I'm just going to speak to it. And I'm going to live the abundant life in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to expect the goodness of who he is to chase me down, not based on how good I am or what suit or tie I wore or what color my hair is or skin, but based on what Jesus Christ and Christ alone did for me at Calvary. And it doesn't just stop there. That's where it begins. Amen? Amen. Woohoo! There's a verse in the Bible that says, it says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. I like the word, you ever have batteries? Recharge. And we're, I'll, I'll close with this. Keep when you're recharged. Guess what? When things, I got. Ever, anybody here got an electric fence? No. Let me ask you. We're, if you have electric fence, will anybody here grab a hold of that electric fence? Why? It'll zap you. You'll be bellowing like a cow, <laughs> carrying on. <laughs> When you're walking and understanding, and here's as I leave this, we leave here, and I've said this the last, the last couple of weeks, have confidence, not mental confidence, not just a mental assertion, a mental behavior modification, but have confidence in your heart like Jesus did. If he deposited his spirit in us, if Christ's spirit lives in us, Amen. if it lives in us, then all that Jesus is we have right in here through the Holy Spirit. And as we grab a hold of that, and see all the world's coming. It's like heaven. It says you're, you're crowned with glory. And we use, it's not just a, a crown on your head. You walk around with a big stick and a long robe. The crown of glory, it encompasses everything of your entire being. You're crowned with his glory. Ooh. But when you walk, you're crowned with his glory. And when things come at you, you're like the, the world comes at you. It's like electric fence touching you. They don't want no part of you. They don't want any part of you. So when they come, let the, if they come, they'll get zapped away in Jesus' name. Don't have, that's a weird analogy, but my point, my point, I've been messing with the electric fence. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you who's the, who's the bigger one, as my daughter had grabbed it before I would. And I was doing real good at, hey, Jessica, it'd be okay. Just, just zap onto it, and I was messing around with it. But the, the point is, when it's hot and charged, nobody wants no part of it. But when it's weak and low and ain't no current to it, people just walk right on through everything. They walk right out of everything. When you and I know who we are and you know where you're going and you know that he paid the price and did it in full and you're his kid and you're his daughter before anything else, that you got that, I call that holy glory charged up deal that, whatever, that the enemy can't touch, have no part of you. It can't get around you. But if you walk around, oh, woe is me. I hate to, having to read this. I hate having to do this. I hate, Hello, brother. I hate having to do all those things. Then what happens is that electric, all that energy, just get, all the power to live life in Jesus gets robbed. Although it's there the whole time. It was there, never left. But it gets robbed from who you are because you see the circumstances in life bigger than what God is. 
When you start seeing God bigger than all that, you can enjoy life every day. And, and on top of that, you don't have to be condemned in it. How many here like being condemned? Hmm? Nobody here likes being condemned? We sure seem to do a good, not we here, but it seems like the world does a good part, good job of it. No, we had a guy here mowing the grass. Or no, What was he doing yesterday? Was it mowing the grass? What was he doing? Fixed the driveway. And uh, he growed up going to church. And in paraphrasing it from what we could gather, he went to no part of church. My friends, that's not how it ought to be. We shouldn't let people come to church not feel condemned and, and busted up and beat up. We should let them know that God, that through Jesus Christ, loves them like, the, like a bear loves honey. Like a bear loves honey, and, he, and we want his sweetness to be all over you. We want his sweetness to be all over you, clean you up, clean you up, and enjoy you as a son and a daughter. Amen? Amen. Did he come to put heaven in you? Let me ask you, is because of Jesus, is heaven in you? Yes. In his world is there sickness. In his world is there doubt. In his world is there, is there frustration and hurt. No. In his world is life and victory. In his world is there darkness. And here I'm going to ask you, what world do you live in? We live in his world. And what I mean is the things going around us, when you, here's, that's, that's just like looking at the pole. That's just like looking at the pole. That's just like believing in Jesus. Do you believe you live in his world? Do you believe that all he is, do you believe that he did everything for you? That's a yes or no thing. It ain't a well, it may be, could have been, should. It's yes or no. I never know. Halfway believing usually doesn't do very good. Half committed doesn't do very good. You know, if I halfway commit to something, I don't like to do that because generally you don't get the full effect of what can be done. I don't want to say amen at once. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ is fully committed to you. He's fully committed to never backing down. He's fully committed to never leaving you. He's fully committed to whatever's going on. Amen? But is there times that there's rough times? Yes, I'm not telling you that. I'm not telling you that there's not. But in those rough times, don't just look for the band-aid. Look to believe that he's the solution. Believe that he's the answer. Believe it and keep you know, so many times when I talk with people, they believe that, but after a while, they, they lose that power. I use that power. They lose that power because everything in the world just encompasses their brain, their heart, and I think it gets dropped down in them, and it just robs their power to, to, for the strength of everyday life around them. I think you and I, are, and if you'll and be encouraged to love the people just around you and let it blow from there, you have a lot more strength. You have a lot more joy. Don't all shout it down at one time. I'm going to just read, I'm just going to read this one verse and I'm going to be done. But I'm here to encourage you today that the Holy Spirit, the power of God, we don't want to just come and have church. I want you to live and leave here and let the church come out of you and who you are in Christ. Let what Christ has done you come out of you in every day. If you're struggling with this, struggling with that, be like, be like what Jesus spoke to Lazarus. What did he say? Come forth. I mean, what did Lazarus do? He came forth. That same power that rests in Jesus rests in, rests in you and me. Call things. Speak when Jesus, I said this a couple weeks ago, Jesus spoke to the fig tree. It was pretended to be something that wasn't, and what did he say? He answered it back. You pretentious thing, you're trying to pretend to produce fruit, you ain't doing anything. I'm not just going to curse you with the leaves. I'm going to curse you at the very root that makes you live and tick and do its thing. I'm done with that. And then right after that, he comes back and talks to the disciples and he says, what, you speak to the mountain and you believe? Well, here's another one. You speak to the mountain and you'll get what you, what does it say? You get what you say. That's another one there. How do you operate in that? By faith. By faith. Believe. Believe. And as you believe, that will empower you and give you strength for each and every day. Whatever you do, if you're a woodworker, if you're a, a, a business owner, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, if you're on all those journeys trying to figure that out, believe that, that what Jesus done, you're the best at whatever that is. You're the best at whatever it is, and his goodness and mercy and favor is chasing me down in all of that deal. He opens up doors no one else can open. He makes a way when no one else can make a way. And respond, respond out of that and live out of that with excitement and with assurance. 
All the promises, it says right here. It says in, in Corinthians, and I'll just stop right here. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen. In him, they are true. In him, they are secure. In him, they are binding. And in him, they are valid. Everybody say amen to that. Amen, amen to that. Say I'm safe and secure. In Jesus. You believe that this morning? Safe and secure in Jesus. Now, can you boldly declare this like that? Good things are coming my way? Huh? Good things are coming my way. The steps of a righteous man. Are you righteous? Oh, boy, we better, I better not open. You're righteous because Christ made you righteous. By coming to church to here didn't make you no more righteous than sitting at the street corner with a feed me sign. You're, as, you're righteous because you believed in Jesus Christ. And when we come here to church, we iron sharp as iron. We build each other up. We go out in the world knowing that as we go out in the world that his light is shining in and through us. That he is my strength. So let me ask you this. I'm going to throw this one out. Does Ebola have anything on you? No. Sickness and disease has nothing on you. Because you don't live in that world. You live in his world. Is there a song like that? Don't have to live in this world? I don't know how that works. But you and I are peculiar people. We're not of, we are not of all the circumstances of things that are going around here. We are a light to point that Jesus is the way out of all these circumstances. Amen? Amen, Amen to that. Now you guys all walk around, amen to that. <laughs> amen to that. There's power in the Amen. There's binding power in the amen. amen. All right. How many are going to go forward this week? Amen. How many know that Jesus is the Savior of the world? Amen. How many know he didn't come to condemn you? Amen. But he come to give you life and it what? More, More abundant. abundant. When you walk around, all the promises are what? Yes. In him are yes and amen. His promises, are they for you? Yes. Vern, of his promises for you? Yes, they are. He thinks that Vern, he thinks Vern was to die for. He loves him like a monkey loves bananas. And we're going to believe with him that good things are coming his way even when it doesn't look like it. Because we don't live in the don't look good world. We live in the Jesus world. He makes, and we're going to believe it to make it look good. Amen? All right. Father, we seal this time up in Jesus' name. Father, you know the blueprints of each and every person in this room? And Father, as we go forward, this, go forward this morning, as they go forward in their lives, that Father, they don't leave here just with band-aids on this issue or that issue or band-aids on this and that. But Father, there's a complete setting for a complete setting them free in Jesus. In Jesus' reality, as they believe in you, as they trust in you, all the ups and downs in and outs of life won't consume them and rob them of all their power, but you will give them strength, you will give them wisdom, you will give them knowledge, you will give them all that they need as they look to you, as they trust in you, as they rely on you. And Lord, you've, you've, you've asked me to share, it might not make the, the, the might not make sense to you right now. It might not, it seems kind of goofy. But I encourage you, what seems to be goofy doesn't make sense. Don't stop believing. Don't stop looking. Don't stop trusting. Don't stop relying and leaning on Jesus. It says he's the author. He is the finisher of your faith. And he wants, he wants more for you. He wants, the, he wants more for you than you want for yourselves. He wants the very best. So Father, I speak just continued, continued revelation of your, of your wisdom and knowledge in my brothers and sisters. I continue, thank you, that the promise of prosperity, the promise of blessing, the promise of favor, the promise of always going forward, the promise of always being, of always being blessed going back, going forwards, and, and always being at the head and not the bottom. All those promises manifest in their life, not with just a hope or a wish, but comes out of a relationship that they have with you, that you are their everything, that they are qualified because they believed in you. And they have asked you to be the Lord of their life. So, Father, I thank you for your son. I thank you for his salvation that he that was been purchased and paid for for each and every person in this room and across the entire world. 
I pray for all of our leaders and I pray for all those in charge of all that was going on that you would bring the right people across their path. You, you would put the right people in there and Father that they would see that we as we go forward we're not here to condemn and beat up but we're here to promote the love in the life of Jesus and all that he's done in us. So Father I thank you. We, we receive it all through your son. We receive it all through your grace and your goodness in Jesus name. And everyone said Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, are you going to have a good week? Are we going to walk in fear? No. Are we going to walk in confidence? Are we going to walk in assurance that he is more than able? Amen.